Here we are to use the inverse function property to determine whether f and g are inverses of each other, where f of x is 6x and g of x is x divided by 6. And so first of all, the inverse function property states that for two functions f and g, if the composition of f with g takes any input back to itself and the composition in the other direction g with f takes any input back to itself then f and g are inverses of each other. Inverse functions. The property has a second part that says if you have a pair of inverse functions then the composition in both directions will take anything back to itself. But this is the part that we need in this case. So in our case, we're looking at the composition of f with g of x first, and f then of g of x because that's the definition of a, the composition, what the composite function does. So g of x divides anything that it sees by 6, or g divides anything that it sees by 6. So we get f of x divided by 6. But f multiplies anything it sees by 6, so Specifically, we'll multiply x divided by 6 by 6. The 6s will cancel, and we get x. So the first composition does take anything back to itself. Let's try the composition in the other direction. So now we have g of f of x. And what does f of x do to anything it sees? It multiplies it by 6. So g of 6x. In turn, g divides anything that it sees by 6. So it will take the 6x and divide that by 6. The 6s cancel and we get x. So yes, f and g are inverses of each other. What one does, the other one undoes. So the second function, the f of x equals 2x minus 3, and the g of x equals the quantity x plus 3 divided by 2. So the composition of f with g of x, which has the value of f of g of x, then we know that g takes x to x plus 3 over 2. So let's find out then what f does with x plus 3 over 2. Well, f multiplies anything it sees by 2 and subtracts 3. So 2 times x plus 3 over 2 minus 3. 
First of all, the twos cancel to leave x plus 3, subtract 3, the threes neutralize each other to leave x. So the first part is satisfied. Let's try now the second part, composition of g with f of x, g of f of x equals g of, what, does, what is f of x? It's 2x minus 3. And what does g do to anything it sees? It, sub, it adds 3 and divides the result by 2. So we have 2x minus 3, add 3, divided by 2. The 3's neutralize each other to leave 2x over 2. The 2's cancel to leave x. So yes, f and g are inverses of each other. Let's go on to the third example. The third example, f of x is x squared minus 9, and g of x is the square root of x plus 9, square root of the quantity x plus 9. It's going to be significant that we are told that the we have a restricted domain for f of x. That is, that x is greater than or equal to 0. So we don't have an entire parabola. We just have the right-hand side. I'll be mentioning that in a minute. So we have composition of f with g of x equals f of g of x. But g of x is the square root of the quantity x plus 9. What does f do to anything? It squares it and subtracts 9. So we'll have the square root of x plus 9 squared minus 9. When we square the square root, we get the radicand, which is x plus 9 this time. Then we subtract 9. The 9's neutralize each other, and we get x. Now in the other direction, we have the composition of g with f of x. So g of f of x. But f of x is x squared minus 9, where the x is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to have g of x squared minus 9. And what does g do to x? Uh, squared minus 9, it first of all adds 9 and then, I'm sorry, yes, it first of all adds nine, 9 and then takes the square root. So g is going to take x squared minus 9, add 9, and take the square root. The 9's neutralize each other, so we get the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is the same as the absolute value of x. And since we know that x is greater than or equal to 0, we were given that to start with, the absolute value of a non-negative number is itself. So here again, 
F and G are inverses. So, one last example here. Um, we're going to have f of x is the reciprocal of the quantity x minus 8, and g of x is the reciprocal of x plus 8. So the composition of f with g of x will equal f of g of x will equal f of the reciprocal of x quantity plus 8. And what does f do with anything? It takes the reciprocal of 8 less than that number. So it's going to be 1 over 1 over x. Sorry, that should be an x. The 8s neutralize each other, and we get 1 divided by 1 over x, which is the same as 1 times x over 1, which gives us x. And so the last composition would be the composition of g with f of x. which is g of f of x, where f of x is the reciprocal of the quantity x minus 8. So we'll have g of 1 over x minus 8. And what does g do to anything? It takes the reciprocal of what it sees and adds 8. So this would be 1 over 1 over x minus 8 plus 8. And the reciprocal of the reciprocal gives us x minus 8 back. Or you can say it will give you 1 times the quantity x minus 8 over 1, which is x minus 8. And then we have an 8 at the end to add. The 8s neutralize each other, and we get x. So again, f and g are inver inverses of each other. Now, there are you're certainly going to see examples where you are not given a pair of inverses to test using the uh, inverse function property. So be, be, be aware that um, you haven't necessarily made a mistake if you do not get x in both cases. It just means that the pair of functions were not a pair of inverses.